Hi and welcome to the End Times. Surah 839 of the Islamic Quran states that the Muslim God Allah commands his followers, the Muslims, to conquer and rule the world through peaceful or violent methods. Let's read the Surah 839 and see what it really has to say. Surah 839 reads as follows, And fight them until there is no more tumult or oppression, and there prevail justice and faith in Allah altogether and everywhere. But if they cease, verily Allah doth see all that they do. Okay, let's take this verse piece by piece so that we may clearly understand what the Muslim God Allah is commanding and forcing his followers to do. First of all, this verse says, and fight them until there is no more tumult or oppression. Fight them means a command from the Muslim God Allah to all Muslims to fight or kill the infidel and all those who do not believe or oppose Islam. Now, the next part states, until there is no more tumult or oppression, meaning, fight the infidel, that's the non-believer, you and me, until he, the infidel, stops fighting you, the Muslim, or until you, the Muslim, have won or conquered or even killed the infidel, which is the non-believer. Let's take the next part of this surah, which states, and there prevail justice and faith in Allah altogether and everywhere. This clearly means to fight them until there is justice, meaning Muslim justice, and faith in Allah altogether and, here's a magic word, everywhere. Everywhere, this means throughout the world. To put it in plain terms, this surah actually states the following. I'm going to read it in plain terms. Fight the infidel or all those who do not believe until they submit and turn their faith to Allah everywhere throughout the world. In other words, convert the world to Islam through the use of violence. This surah is plain and simple. The Quran commands Muslims to take over the world, converting everyone to Islam voluntarily or by the use of force. <clears throat> those who resist shall be killed. You see, this is very simple to understand. What becomes difficult to understand is why people like Pastor Rick Warren and his ignorant followers are trying to unite a movement that is out to destroy Christianity and anyone else or any other religion who opposes Islam. You ask the majority of Muslims concerning this surah and they will use taqiyya or kitmin, which means that they will lie to you in order to protect Islam and further the advance their cause. Muslims will tell you that you are taking the surah out of context. But what context are they talking about? More than half of the emails that I get from Muslims concerning this and other surahs tell me the same thing, that I am taking this surah out of context. It doesn't make any sense. But when I ask them to please explain this and other surahs to me, they simply do not or cannot. Most of them don't even know the meaning of the surahs in which they are reading or following. Remember, Allah does not allow Muslims to question the Quran, no matter what. So they're at a bind. Muslims are commanded only to read the Quran and the Hadith and follow the orders given, plain and simple. This surah is plain and simple to understand. There's nothing complicated about it. The only religion allowed by Muslims is Islam, and they will follow the Quran. Allah and Muhammad in order to accomplish this goal. Just before the rapture takes place and Jesus comes for the church, you will see the beginning of the unification of the two in the world, which are Christianity and Islam. This was dreamt by King Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel thousands of years ago. The two legs of the statue that the king saw were the Roman leg, in other words the western leg, and the eastern leg, which is in Constantinople, which is located in Turkey, which is a Muslim country. We are now seeing this take place right before our very own eyes, with the help of the ignorant Christian pastors who are uniting Christianity and Islam. After the rapture takes place, the false prophet will finish the work that these ignorant pastors began. Are you seeing an expansion of Islam 
worldwide? If you are, the reason is that this prophecy was foretold thousands of years ago. This one world religion and the new world order is what Jesus is going to destroy in his second coming at the end of the tribulation period. Muslims think that their God Allah is helping them expand for the good of their religion and the good of them. But actually, what is happening is that Satan is setting them up for the big one. We as Christians should actually rejoice when we see these things take place, instead of panicking and having fear. Because Jesus told us in the book of Matthew chapter 24 that these things must first happen before his coming. Before the church is raptured, certain things need to fall into place. This is one of them. This is how we know that the rapture is very, very near. Just like Satan deceived millions of people throughout history, he's doing the same with Islam. Fortunately, some Muslims have seen the reality of this demonic movement and have defected and turned towards Jesus Christ as their Savior and God. Yes, Islam will continue to expand and conquer territory just as predicted by God, but their demise and end is very, very near. You Muslim, take a closer look at what your Quran is asking you to do. Look at what your God Allah is asking you and what He is giving you in return for all the things He's asking you to do. Look at what He's asking you to do, whether it's negative or whether it's positive, whether it involves killing of other people or not. Read the Quran carefully and do not go by what your Imam tells you. Remember, Imams are waist deep in this deception and want you to do the same. If you Muslims turn to Jesus Christ for help like thousands have, you will see the reality of what this world is heading into. Christians, do not be deceived and follow Rick Warren or any pastor that wants to unite Christianity with Islam. Read the Bible carefully and see that you cannot unite God and Satan. It's totally impossible. Islam calls Jesus Christ a liar by not believing that He is the Son of God and He is also God. Christians are followers of Jesus Christ. Christians, followers of Christ. And you cannot follow Christ if you do not believe in Him or believe in His Word. Remember, the end is near. These things are happening because Jesus Christ predicted them thousands of years ago. They are taking place exactly how the Bible predicted them, and they're happening right now in our times. We are very privileged to see these things happening, but on the other hand, we must be ready. Ready to take on that challenge ready to preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ, no matter who gets offended, it doesn't matter. As long as we don't offend God Almighty, it's okay. Remember, the true gospel has to be preached. We cannot sugarcoat it, we cannot bend the rules, bend the word of God. We must tell it as it is. If you don't believe in the word of God, then someday you will have to answer to Him for all your doings for your uh, unbelief, for your sins. If you do believe in the Word of God and you turn your heart to Him, all these sins will be washed away. They'll be forgotten and forgiven. Muslim, think it over. Is it worth giving your life for something you're not sure of? Wouldn't you rather give your life for something you are sure of? Remember, Jesus Christ died not only for me, He died for you too, Muslim. He died so that you may have an opportunity at making it to heaven. May God bless you. Thank you very much. And until next time, Lord willing. And by the way, if you want further information concerning this and other subjects, please feel free to visit my website at endtimes.us.com. Again, that's endtimes.us.com. Until next time, Lord willing, God bless and thank you.